This here is called a clock spring. It's responsible for taking the electronic signals from the rotating steering wheel into the car. Sometimes these clock springs fail, causing your horn to stop working or an airbag light to light up on the dash. We're going to be taking apart one of these to see what's inside. The clock spring is located behind the steering wheel. To access it, we're going to first need to remove the airbag and then the steering wheel. Because I'm going to be working with the airbag system, I'm going to disconnect the battery and wait for the system to discharge for 15 minutes. First thing I'm going to do is remove this little side access panel on the left side of the steering wheel. Next, there's a torque screw that needs to be loosened and not removed. On the right side here, once you pop off the little plastic cover that goes here, there's a little Torx bolt that we also need to loosen up. <sighs> once the two side bolts are loose, I can slowly work out the airbag. To remove the airbag connector, I'm going to squeeze this white tab and pull it up, and then squeeze the yellow connector and pull it out. Then I can remove the airbag and place it face up safely. Next I'm going to use a screwdriver to pry up on this little tab for this connection to the cruise control. Next I'm going to lock the steering wheel by turning it until it clicks. Then I'm going to use a 19 millimeter socket with a 3 inch extension to loosen the nut in the middle. Next I'm going to unlock the steering wheel and rotate it to the straight position. Next I'm going to use a piece of tape at the top here to mark the steering wheel position before I remove it. I'm also going to be using a little touch up pen here to make a little mark on the splines of the steering wheel so that it lines up when we reinstall it. To get the steering wheel off I'm just going to give it a bit of a wiggle and a tug and it comes off the spline. Carefully route the wiring through. This here is where the clock spring is located. Be careful not to rotate this thing too many times otherwise you can break the wires. I'm going to next remove these two Phillips screws that hold the covers on. There's also one more Phillips screw at the bottom here that needs to be removed. Then I'm going to proceed to remove the covers and then remove the top cover. This here is the clock spring. There are four screws that need to be removed in order to remove it from the vehicle. You can then proceed to remove clock spring away from the steering face. Finally we're going to remove these connectors here that go to the clock spring. The yellow ones for the airbag. And lift it up and then remove the yellow connector. And then here this one is just a tab and we can remove the clock spring from the vehicle. So here we've got the clock spring out of the vehicle. I'm just going to use a screwdriver to open it up to see what's inside and how it works. Just lift up on these tabs, work my way around. So it appears we've got two plastic welds right here and here. I'm just going to go in with a screwdriver and break these out. Pop that one out and pop that one out. And then I can remove the cover. Next I'm going to remove this black plastic cover and that reveals this ribbon cable in here and you can see when you turn the steering wheel how the ribbon cable works the ribbon cable unwinds until you get to the end and then it'll stop and if you keep going you could actually end up breaking some of these wires which is what you got to be careful with when you reinstall the clock spring now if you wind it to the other direction you can see the cable contracts and tightens up until it reaches the end and again, there's a chance that you could break the cable if you turn it even further. And as you'll notice, if I take this thing apart, the mechanism is fairly simple. There isn't anything like bearings. It's just a ribbon cable that rotates in a plastic housing. Now if I unwind the ribbon cable here, you can see it's just a very long spiral with about six wires in the ribbon. On this side here, I'm just going to pry up this plastic piece. And again, that's just a slippery plastic piece to allow the clock spring to turn. And here I'm going to pry out this wire guide. Now because the airbag operation is so vital, they actually use a very heavy duty tab here to hold the wire in to the contact. And there's the little two tabs here that you pry up for that airbag wire. Then I'm going to pull out this tab with the contacts on it. This here is where the ribbon cable makes a connection to the plugs on the inside of the steering wheel. This here is a very common place for failure where the cable can bend or crack and if you need to repair it you'd have to cut this wire and run a patch cable. I'm going to remove the contacts from the outside of the clock spring and again you can see this is where the ribbon cable joins to the plugs. Now if you were to stretch out this ribbon cable it's roughly double my height which is about 12 feet long. We can test the functionality of the ribbon cable in the clock spring by using a multimeter measuring continuity and just touch that against the two terminals as you can see those are continuous that means this ribbon cable is functional 
Now this is just a basic clock spring with wiring for the cruise control horn as well as the airbag. Modern cars will have a much more complicated clock spring with more wiring for things like audio controls and Bluetooth. So other than a couple of cheap plastic pieces and a really long ribbon cable, this is all that's responsible for controlling all the electronics in your steering wheel. When you're installing your clock spring you want to make sure that this alignment peg is lined up here with the steering wheel straight. Otherwise when you reinstall this you could be breaking wires as you're turning the steering wheel. Installing the new clock spring is pretty much the reverse of removal. I'm just going to go ahead and plug in these connectors and put this tab down and then install the clock spring onto the car. Next I'm going to reinstall the four Phillips screws that hold the clock spring into the car. Next I'm going to replace the steering wheel column covers. Then replace the three Phillips screws. With the covers in place I'm going to make sure the clock spring is positioned at the top and then reinstall the steering wheel and feed the wire through the steering wheel and then install it onto the splines of the shaft making sure it lines up exactly according to the markings we made earlier. Then I'm going to replace the connector for the cruise control and then replace this 19 millimeter nut. Then again we're going to turn the steering wheel until it locks. Then use the 19 millimeter ratchet to tighten down the steering wheel nut nice and snug. Then I'm going to release the steering lock and straighten the steering wheel again. Next I'm going to bring in the airbag and connect the airbag wire and put the white connector down and then reinstall the airbag into the steering wheel. Then we're going to tighten up the Torx screws on either side of the steering wheel and then we're going to tighten up the Torx on this side of the steering wheel Then I'm going to replace the plastic cover. Next we're going to reconnect the battery. Finally we're going to start it up Turn the steering wheel from lock to lock. Make sure that all of the steering wheel functions work and that there's no warning lights on the dashboard.